Hello everybody, United Front is upon us, and I'm sure by now you've heard about these three new basic trainings and the new Cavalry Division, but now that we've got them all in-game on PS4 and Xbox One at least, I've done plenty of testing and I'll do my best to give you the most detail possible about them, I won't just read things off a list. First up, how about the Wanderlust basic training, because it's a fun one, essentially the gun game basic training. You always spawn with a random weapon with up to six attachments, and every time you swap weapons you will get a new random weapon, including DLC weapons that you don't own. So you can hold on to one weapon for a while, or never reload and keep swapping to something new. It can be fun, although not very practical, and realistically I didn't need to do any testing for this training, but I did anyway because I was curious to see if it was truly random, or if there was a bias towards certain weapons, or if they had a bunch of pre-built weapons with the same attachments every time. So I sat here for a while just swapping weapons, and I was going to get a good sample size and show you the distribution, but it turned out it doesn't appear to be independent random like I was expecting, because in my first 57 weapon swaps, I got every single weapon exactly once. So it seems like once you get a weapon, it doesn't get put back into the pool of weapons until you get every weapon one time, which is cool and I guess good to know. That means the weapons you get with this training will feel very random, you'll see every weapon in the game before seeing a duplicate. There was no set order of weapons though, as far as I can tell. You will never know what comes next unless you have an incredible autistic ability to retain 50 six weapons in your head, and you know that there's only one left it could be. However, when I kept going after that, it didn't go through every weapon again. It actually started behaving randomly with replacement. I got some duplicate weapons before getting every weapon a second time. And as far as attachments go, those seem pretty random as well. I have seen the same weapon come up with different attachments each time, although there did appear to be a bias towards having more attachments. It seems like nearly every weapon you get will be custom, meaning two or more attachments. Almost never one or zero. So I don't know everything about this training, but I guess we don't need to. The whole point of it is that it feels random, so why would I want to ruin the fun? Next up, there's Escalation, where after each kill you can aim down your sights twice as fast for a short period, and that short period appears to be about 6 seconds, so fairly long time, and it shows up in the bottom of your screen while it's active, and double kills will instantly refill your magazine, and they describe this as being a training for those people who love rushing with SMGs, which I guess it could be, sure, but I immediately think of every shipment LMG camper who will now never have to reload, combined with that lightning fast ADS speed, oh boy. But mainly, this training is a godsend for anyone going for those Chrome Tiger multi-kill camos. What comes to mind right away are those double barrels. When they say instantly refill your magazine, they mean it. That means as soon as you get the second rapid kill and every kill after that, you don't have to wait the extra time for the multi-kill medal to pop up on the screen or anything for your ammo to refill, because in that case it wouldn't help you chain together more kills at all. So it happens right away. This training will make triple kills or even bigger kill chains far easier across the board, and for something like the Fire M30, already a godly weapon, becomes insanity. It took me a little bit at first to get used to when I had to reload and when I didn't. It's unnatural firing a double barrel five times in a row, but it is very fun. Hopefully you're counting how many zero effort triple kills I've been getting in this one game. Big oof to anyone who got Chrome Tiger right before this update. Yeah. Well, let's go to the final basic training, unlocked after prestiging the Cavalry Division one time. We've got the training I'd say most people are excited about, the return of the Specialist Strike Package introduced in Modern Warfare 3, replacing your score streaks with extra basic trainings of your choice every 200 score, and eventually all of the basic trainings at 800 score, obviously resetting if you die. But when you get there, you become quite the super soldier. And by all of the basic trainings, that means, first of all, you get these 15 that are selectable as options for your first first three unlocks, but then you also get some perks from trainings that are not on that list. For example, you get the part of the shifty training, which allows your pistol to fill up when you swap it, but you aren't able to magically add a second attachment to your secondary in the middle of the game. Another example, you get the short fuse explosives from Saboteur, but you don't magically get two lethals. Same with Concussed, that normally gives you two lethals and two tacticals, but that doesn't happen either in the middle of the game. And yet another one, Serrated, gives you faster melee speed, and you do get that 
perk, but it obviously doesn't suddenly replace your primary with a shovel. So on top of the 15 trainings in that list, you do essentially get every perk in the game, as long as it isn't one that alters your class in some way. So this is very viable. For anyone who doesn't want to be taken out of the game to call in a streak and would rather buff themselves up, definitely ideal for anyone going for V2s, and it opens up tons of powerful combinations. When picking your division, if you're pretty good and you're going to be getting to that specialist bonus a lot, I'd avoid airborne and infantry since most of their benefits overlap with basic trainings, you'll only end up with a bit more speed or a couple more attachments, while stuff like expeditionary and cavalry have no overlap, resistance only has a little bit with the lookout, so you can get all those map ping benefits, armored is good for the fire protection, FMJ, and reduced flinch, and mountain is in between making you invisible to streaks and making your movement silent instead of only quiet, so still an okay option. Lastly, one question I saw some people had that isn't hard to answer is can you use it in war mode, because that's a mode where there already are no streaks, but sorry, the answer is no. The reason there are no war streaks is to completely remove the idea that you might want to stay alive, or that holding a streak might be better than throwing yourself at the objective. So no, it doesn't work in war. But regardless, a very fun basic training, I would definitely recommend prestiging that cavalry division at least once to have access to that. Well then, we should get to the big new cavalry division. Oh, what's this? Breaking news! Various UI fixes! Guys, they fixed! typos and text descriptions. It isn't like they paste that exact same thing into these patch notes every single update. How about we take a look and see how they did this time? Oh, that is a shame. The double typo challenge lives through another update. Better luck next time on basic grammar proofreading in your AAA game. Alright, how about that cavalry division that replaces your primary with a shield? But as your secondary, you can select any weapon. A pistol can use an attachment on it though, and has the quickest swapping, whereas a primary can't have anything on it. The shield is treated more like a piece of equipment, at least as of right now. You do not select it like a weapon, there are no camo challenges or weapon levels or customization options at all, which I'm in favor of to be honest. There is no inspect animation and there are no variants of it, although it does have the little color flag of a common or a base weapon. Also a thing to note, we were given an extra class, just like with resistance, so now you can have up to 17. I won't say too much about the shield, but I'll say that it's very large and very good. I believe the biggest a COD shield has ever been. It also never wears down or blurs your vision or with cracks on the screen. I would consider it a top tier shield, but maybe you shield veterans have differing opinions. Well, I thought I'd highlight a few basic trainings that have unique interactions with the shield. Gunslinger is an interesting one. As you know, it changes your sprint animation so that that your weapon is always up and ready to go, and the same thing happens with the shield. Instead of waving it around by your side while sprinting, you sprint with that thing in front of you. And I confirmed that is not just a first person visual, same thing happens in game. Thank you to Mr. Sticks Renegade here for being my testing buddy. You can see sprinting with Gunslinger versus sprinting without it. But it actually isn't that useful because at cavalry level 2, which only takes a few games to reach, you get the shield charge, which you can use very frequently, and it does the same thing as Gunslinger by keeping your shield out in front. But I thought that was an interesting fact to point out. Next, there's Inconspicuous, which can be fun. You often want to crouch with the shield to cover your legs, and Inconspicuous will let you move around much faster while crouched. Pretty natural combination there. Third, despite most of Riflemen being negated, it does allow you to swap weapons faster, which is great to be able to swap off that shield quickly into a weapon like a shotgun to get a kill. The Sawed Off has the fastest swap time of them all. Or very similarly, you could opt for Duelist. Similar firepower to a shotgun, and the swap to a pistol is already very quick. Also, Serrated is another one that is partially negated, as it won't replace your primary with anything, but it does give you that faster melee speed. Your shield bash goes from taking about 1.4 seconds to about 0.9 seconds. Half a second might not sound like much, but it is very good. You can get those two rapid hits off in 1.8 seconds instead of 2.8. And while there are no shield bash challenges for things like camos, there are of course the five new challenges in the divisions category, and one of those is to get shield kills. Serrated is fun for that. Finally, the super obvious option being Hunker might be your best bet regardless, because when people can't shoot you, landing an explosive behind you is often what they'll want to do. But there are some interesting shield combinations. For the most part, it's a shield much like we've seen in the past, and most of the old strategies hold. You can do the tactical double swap trick, which will help if you get used to it. It works with some lethals too, but it's easier with a tactical for the default layout. All you do is hit the tactical and then double tap switch weapon as quickly as you can, and you'll have your other weapon out as fast as possible. This is on a class 
class with Hunker, not Rifleman, so it's just an instant swap. Uh, so if you're good at that, no need to worry about weapon swap times. I wouldn't call the shield OP, but I would call it annoying, especially with everybody using it right now. It was very fun in Horde Point before they removed it. In fact, it made things very easy. I never liked that mode a whole lot with the annoying Tesla guns, but it was amusing with the shields. However, there is a counter to everybody sitting in corners with a shield. Yeah, there you go. Whenever you get the shield off, it's fun to pull out a Molotov if you're not running a specialist on everything that is. Let's move on. I mentioned at Cavalry Tier 2, you get the Shield Bash, used just like the Bayonet Charge, 4% movement buff. It doesn't make it a one-hit kill or anything, it just brings your shield up in front of your face as you sprint. Pretty self-explanatory there, it's a good way to move around the map with your shield up. The downside being that your character is going to make very loud yelling noises. Tier 3 is where things get very interesting with the improved objective capabilities. Let's go through that with the info they gave us plus extra testing. They listed off a bunch of things in the notes, but it didn't say how much things changed and they listed some things under cavalry tier 3 when they're actually tier 4. Anyway, at tier 3, your search and destroy bomb planting goes from 5 seconds to about 3.2 seconds and diffusing from 7.5 to 4.7 and on top of that, planting and diffusing becomes silent. Yeah, you heard that right. Pretty big deal. This is your new ninja defusing division. And they said it helps with demolition as well, but demolition isn't in the game right now, so I don't know by how much. Uh, but capturing Dom flags goes from 10 seconds to 6.75. When holding a CTF flag, your location will update less frequently. That turned out to be a ping every 7.5 seconds with cavalry instead of the normal 5 seconds. And you also get 20 extra shield health while carrying the flag. Shield health meaning it doesn't regenerate like normal health, but including that, you essentially have 120 health. It's similar for Gridiron, except your location pings every two seconds instead of every one. So Cavalry is more helpful percentage-wise than in CTF, but the Gridiron ping is so fast that it doesn't matter very much. Although you do get 30 extra shield health for carrying the ball for a total shield of 130 because Gridiron already gives you shield, so you have 230 health total, plus having the literal shield on your back. So you're a little juggernaut running around with that ball. In Hardpoint, you will get score for holding the point being 10 every 5 seconds. Not much, but it's something, and it does get buffed up to 25 every 5 seconds with Cavalry 4. Moving to war mode, core objective speed is not affected, so pushing tanks, planting and defusing bombs, raising flags in the new DLC map, captive untying and all that, no change, but all buildables like walls, hedgehogs and MGs, that goes from 5 to 3.4 seconds, and planting bombs to destroy those walls goes from 3 seconds to 2. Also in war, you'll receive XP while securing hardpoint-like zones like the command post and Neptune bunkers, and while escorting the tank, and when reaching tank checkpoints. As an example, tank escorting is 15 at Cavalry 3 and 25 at Cavalry 4. So that's all stuff people have been asking for for a while. It's cool to see it happen, but unfortunately it's tied to one division, which I'm sure isn't what most people had in mind. But it's something. This is a true objective play division. You can do things like this godly strat, which pretty much breaks this section of Operation Breakout. I can be this guy's guardian angel with shield hunker, and there isn't much the enemy team can do about it. Smoke plus a shield guard, and you're getting that bridge built. And if you build it yourself with the shield on your back, you'll have decent cover from the broken building, especially with smoke, you'll be harder to hit, but not so much from the other side, as you can see there. But this isn't going to turn into a war tip video. Point is, the shield is very powerful, and cavalry is a very useful objective play division. Now at Cavalry 4, objectives give extra score and two assists equal a kill. I don't think it would be helpful for me to list off every score number in the game, because who cares, there would be a lot of them, you aren't going to memorize it, the objective speed numbers earlier I thought were more important, but for score, just know that for most things you'll be getting 20-30ish to 30 -ish percent more score for interacting with objectives, and then when they say two assists equals a kill, in the patch notes they listed that under the Cavalry Tier 3 improved objective capabilities, but I tested that with Cavalry 3 and it isn't a thing, it definitely is a Cavalry 4 perk. All it means is that two assists in TDM or crossfires in FFA will give you the score equivalent of having gotten a kill and it will help you earn your Blitzkrieg streaks. It does not count as an actual kill on the scoreboard that goes towards winning the game though and I think that's good. So that's the information I wanted to cover, no need to ramble on any further. I should of course add, when you prestige cavalry, not only do you get specialist, you also get the new ZK-383 SMG with its toggleable fire rate, you can go back and forth whether you want DPS or accuracy, but I don't have the experience with it to give you a great breakdown of that weapon right now, and there are other people who do great gun breakdowns, no need for me to do the exact same thing. 
So hopefully you have gleamed at least a bit of information about the new trainings and division that was not immediately obvious. So get out there and give it all a go. Or if you're on PC, just, uh, you know, uh, hang out for a week. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.